take our bolts. Wow, it's gonna be one of those days, eh? I was looking for a tool and I realized that I totally forgot the heat shield. And I know, I know, you're probably laughing your head off right now, but why didn't you tell me? Welcome back everyone. And behind me, we have a 2009 Subaru Forester. This is a famous car for me on this channel because that's what kind of got me all started. We have a whole bunch of videos. There will be a link in the description box if you want to see all of those. But the reason it's back in here, because if you remember, uh, my parents actually drive this car now. It's been super good. It's just that now there's a noise that's getting worse and worse. So that's why I'm holding these. And that's why I have my lovely assistant Gabby in the driver's seat because we're going to pick it up. And we're going to see if we can determine where that noise is coming from. Maybe a wheel bearing. I already have replaced the uh, drive shaft and I think that was uh, one of the videos as well. So, well, let's just start by getting it up in the air. Ready? All right, Gabby, fire it up. Yeah, just let it roll nice and you can let off the brake. All right, so what I'm listening for now is I'm going to go in here and then I'm just going to listen with my little stethoscope at the bearings. I'll listen to all four of them. We're going to listen to the bearing in here. Probably a better side would be this one. So anyways, you guys get the idea. And then we'll determine what we need to do next. Okay, so it sounds to me like this right front wheel is the worst. Now, if we look at the brakes though, the brakes aren't exactly great, which is something else that we'll get, we're tackling since I'm in there. If you guys remember too, this was part of the uh, first, first video on this thing. These are actually still the same brakes. So they've lasted that long. That's like four or five years now. So let's take this wheel off and I think I might just go ahead and do the brakes first and then redo the test. I'm going to do the front brakes and see what happens. If the noise goes away, great. If not, because this one here with the stethoscope sounds super, super loud. So let's take, let's take this wheel off. All right, so we're going to take the caliper off here. A couple of 14 millimeter. Okay. And I always use something to uh, hold the caliper up because you don't want to stretch out your line. Pretty well common knowledge by now. So check out these pads, guys. I mean, impressively enough, this one's weird though, it's cracked, I don't know why. That's interesting. But they were almost evenly. You can tell that one of the pins is a little bit stuck right now. This one here wore definitely a little bit more, but there was still plenty of life on this pad. At least this one, except for the crack. You guys ever see that before? Comment down below. And let's remove the caliper bracket so we can get to the rotor. All right, off the bracket comes and off comes the rotor. Yeah, you've done your time, but little buddy. So we're gonna redo this test, guys, but I wanna eliminate the brakes because they were pretty rusty. And maybe that was the noise I was hearing. However, I was listening to it from the back. But I'm going to try it one more time. Gabby's inside. She's going to fire it up for me in a minute. And then we're going to just hope that it isn't a wheel bearing. Because that would be easier. 
Let's, let's see what happens. Fire it up. All right, you can put it in here. And let's have a listen. Shut it off. Neutral first. Well, I hear the same exact thing, guys. So, and it's pretty, it's pretty loud. I, if I could get you guys to listen to it, I, I do that, but I don't think a microphone will pick it up with these, uh, these earpieces. So, I guess we're gonna go further. We're gonna go into the wheel bearing. Cool, I guess. Like I was saying, guys, I've never done a wheel bearing on a Subaru before, but it doesn't seem to be too different from other vehicles so we're going to pull there's four bolts around this side and then we're going to once that's removed i'm going to go around we're going to pull the axle nut and hopefully everything should just kind of pop out but as you can tell we do live in the north and we do have a salt belt so yeah everything's a little bit uh crusty right now so we may have to use a little bit of heat to get some of this stuff off but let's just get started well, as a matter of fact guys it's just easier to pull the axle nut out first because then you can probably slide the axle a little bit in so that you can uh, actually gain access to those uh to those bolts so let's just uh start by doing that oh yeah beautiful that came out better than i expected nice the axle's in there pretty good night i would have to remove probably the bottom ball joint here so that I can slide everything out and then have the axle come through but I found out that if you reduce your half inch down to three eighths you can get in there very tightly however there was no way I was using the ratchet on there because there's just too much too much rust buildup and it just I needed some in package to get this off I got the first one loose so let's see if I can get the rest of the other ones three more to go Come on, baby. Yes. Woohoo. It's working. Okay. It's hammer time. Let's just beat this out. Go nice and light. No sense into uh, making damage. And then, kind of like that, and we end up with our shield, our bolts, cool, alright. If I listen to this bearing, it doesn't sound, you guys hear it? Let me bring it closer to the mic. It doesn't sound too healthy. Guys, I think I may have found a way for you guys to hear the bearings I mean check out this new one so if I spin it it's in the vise other than the uh, little bit clickety noises from the vise itself maybe if I tighten everything up I'm sorry I'm not sure why it's quick clicking like that but other than that the bearing is pretty quiet now check out what happens when I switch these up with the old one in the vise, listen to this. I hope you guys can hear that. And I can't, I can't spin the other one like this, by the way, the other one's still really stiff. So, hey, maybe we're onto something. I mean, that's good, right? Because now we have an issue and we think we might've found the problem. So, well, it's, it's not really good because clearly it's bad, but you know what I mean. Okay, guys, so I've gone ahead and I like, cleaned up the entire mating surface here, I've added a little bit of uh, anti-seize or never seize or whatever you want to call that stuff. I like it, it's fantastic. I could put a little bit here around the bearing as well. Uh, if you live in the rust belt, th these are the kind of things that save you later because if you ever have to get back in here, things come apart. Um, so slap that back in. And then one thing I should also note guys, I didn't take out the ABS sensor for this because uh, I forgot. But if you're careful, you shouldn't have to. 
So just be aware that it is in here, it's on the side, and then your reluctor ring stays with the axle from what I can tell. And uh, yeah, so let's put it back in. And I'm just gonna use the bolts to tighten it up evenly. Slide the axle in. And the reason we're doing this by hand, guys, is because if it starts to feel tight, or as you can tell, the top of the bearing isn't pulling in as quick as the bottom, we can adjust that quickly without having the bearing bind into the home. Let's call it the home. Go home, bearing. Okay, and now that everything is nice and snug, and everything's mating evenly. Now it's time for a little bit of impactage to make sure that uh, it doesn't move. I'm gonna do this in a crisscross pattern. All right, now it's time for brakes. Oh, and before we go too far, we can't forget the axle nut. That's pretty important. We'll zip that in. And then we'll go good and tight. Somewhere along there. And then don't forget to hammer down the uh, little lock here so it doesn't back out. You guys already know this, I'm sure, but new rotors always come with an with a rust inhibitor on the mating surfaces. I always like to wipe it clean with uh, parts cleaner, and I'll leave some of that inhibitor on like the surfaces here, just because, well, you know, it just doesn't rust so quickly. So now we put the brake bracket in next with our freshly lubed pins. Alright, let's give just a little bit of torque. Make sure that doesn't get loose. So this one. Awesome. No for the pads. Now that the brake pads are installed, next thing is gonna to be to put the caliper in place, but you always have to bring the calipers in a little bit because right now they're extended because of the wear on the old pads and also the rotor. So the way I like to do this is I like to put a piece of wood on the caliper like this. And I'm gonna try and go towards the center. I have a large C-clamp here. This is a six inch C-clamp. You don't need this large. And I'm just gonna slowly, and not every vehicle has this ability. Some of them you have to turn, some of them, they're a little bit more complex than this. But this one here is just a simple matter of Slowly pressing it in, so you can tell I've got more pressure here. I might, I probably will have to swap it over because I don't think this piece of wood is uh, cutting it. So a little bit on each side until I can get it over the caliper, and or I can get the caliper over the new brake pads. So in all the excitement of having this all back together. I was looking for a tool and I realized that I totally forgot the heat shield. And I know, I know, you're probably laughing your head off right now, but why didn't you tell me? Oh, I gotta redo this whole thing. <sighs> okay, well, we're not gonna watch that a second time. So let's just fast forward to the place where you're gonna see this in the back. Ah, uh, oh well. Okay, we are back in action. It's, it's in the back there. Anyways, I don't want to talk about it. So, let's move on and let's cut this tie wrap that's been holding the caliper. Thank you very much, tie wrap. You've done your job. We're going to put this caliper back in place. I've pushed it all the way in and see how nicely that just slides on now. Wonderful. I'm going to take our bolts. Wow, it's going to be one of those days, eh? All right. And click. All right. Let's take this out from there. And we are going to reinstall the wheel. Let's 
straighten this out a little bit. All right. I'm just gonna put these snug because once it hits the ground, I'm gonna to torque it properly to the specified torque, which uh, I don't actually remember it. I'll have to look it up again. I wanna say it's somewhere in around the 95 to 100 foot pound range, but don't quote me. All right, and just like that, we've installed a wheel bearing and a whole set of brakes on this side. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side, and then we're gonna go for a quick test ride, see how it sounds. Uh, as you guys saw on the bench, Clearly this wheel bearing was the culprit, but I like to change things in pairs because I mean if this wheel bearing is making noise, it's got the same mileage as the one on the opposite side. So, uh, but before I take this off the lift, there's a few more things I want to tackle. We may as well try and deal with this gaping hole in the exhaust here uh, and it's only going to get worse, right? So as a temporary solution, I'm just going to put some muffler cement for now until we can decide what we're going to do here because even if we decide to change this, you know, poor old gasket here, there's not much of a flange holding this together on either side. So we'd have to get this section of pipe, which comes with a resonator. So we're gonna see if we can source that out for a good price. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure what our solution is gonna be here. So I might have to cut either end of the pipe, do some kind of a bracket, uh, I don't know, but we have the same type of situation at the back, so I'm going to fix up both. Oh, really? Oh, that's gross. All right, I should probably be wearing gloves for this, but my hands are so dirty as it is, I'm just going to kind of scoop this along. All right, again, this is just a temporary solution, but this should hold for now. Something else has been bothering me forever, guys, is these darn heat shields. I, when the engines get started, I don't know, that rattle, that there is all you hear until it warms up. It is, oh, it sounds so terrible. Uh, if anybody has a solution to this, please let me know, because I'd like to fix it. I mean, other than removing them, because I'd like to keep them in place just because they create so much, like these pipes end up being so hot and they radiate up and I don't want to cook the engine more than it already gets. Uh, and not to mention, I'm changing the oil right now and if this was hot, it's some protection to get the oil filter because which is right in between all these pipes. Again, so, so not good. They could have definitely done better and they did because in the FB motors, they put the oil filter on top. So that's been rectified. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna try and tighten these up a little bit, see what I can do here. Find a solution. We will rectify it. I promise you that. I think I found it, guys. I just loosened off the clamp, because that's what I've got holding it on, is just this clamp to uh, stop it from making a whole bunch of noise. But look, there's something inside. It's probably what's been bouncing around and driving me berserk for all these years. Get out of there. What is that? What is that? I'll bet you that's all it was. I rotted off, fell inside. Where else could it have came from? I don't know. But does it sound any better? Well, that's, I mean, it's not tight, so it's gonna. Oh, look at all the junk falling out of there. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe that's all it was. Okay, I'm gonna keep cleaning it out, tighten it up and see if it gets better. All right, so it's the next day, guys. We've got the muffler all figured out, hopefully. I finished the oil change, nice and clean. Got the right amount of oil in here now. All we need to do now, close the hood, and we'll give it a test drive. See how it feels. So here we are, we're going down the road here. We're just checking everything out. I know I didn't do a video or I didn't do a test drive with it noisy, because I didn't think you would hear it, but let me tell you right now, it is super quiet in here and everything's working really good. We're gonna test the brakes in a minute here whenever there's nobody behind us. But uh, 
there is such a thing as apparently you need, you need to bed your brake pads in. I don't know if everybody does it, but you're supposed to do multiple stops and then you're supposed to do a little bit of a drive, let them all cool off so that all that, you know, material is fresh onto the new brake pads. But uh, so far it's been pretty good. The other thing I noticed too, guys, the brakes are fantastic. The pedal is nice and high again. There's no pulsating. It's great. It's quiet in the cab. And it's quiet because, believe it or not, that, you know, muffler cement, even though it's just a temporary repair, has made a world of difference in the cab here. So I'm really happy about that. And that's going to do it for today's video, guys. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And of course, as always, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Lots of videos made on this vehicle and we're going to make another one because there is a noise when you're doing any kind of road driving. Uh, again, that doesn't make sense because that's what you're going to do. You're going to be road driving.